The Stanley Cup has to be one of, if not the hardest major sport championship to win. I mean, the amount of games played, the physical toll on players who go out there shift after shift, sometimes fighting through injuries we don't even know about. It's the ultimate test to prove once and for all who the best of the best truly are. The playoffs are for teams and players to step up and bring their game to a whole new level. But we often see some powerhouse teams or individual superstars make it all the way to the postseason only to fall flat and underperform. I mean, we just saw the Boston Bruins go on a historic regular season run only to lose in seven games to the Florida Panthers after failing to clinch in game six and then giving up the tying goal with one minute left in game seven. It's those types of moments that we're going to be talking about in this video. So without further ado, here are the top six worst playoff performances in NHL history. Evgeny Kuznetsov. During a regular season in which he played all 82 games, Evgeny Kuznetsov blossomed into one of the NHL's brightest young stars, becoming the first player not named Alexander Ovechkin or Nicholas Backstrom to lead the Capitals in scoring since Ovi arrived in Washington in 2005. Kuznetsov finished 4th in the NHL with 57 assists and tied for 9th with 77 points, averaging 0.94 points per game. His 77-point breakout season in 2015-2016 was no fluke, but he ran out of gas in the second half of the season and had nothing left in the tank for the playoffs. Kuznetsov netted 20 regular season goals but recorded none after March 1st. And then once the playoffs came around, he really dropped the ball and only managed to score one goal and get one assist through 12 postseason games played. That one goal that Kuznetsov did get came off a fortunate bounce on the power play with the puck landing on his stick in the slot to give Washington a 3-1 lead in a 6-1 victory over the Philadelphia Flyers in game three of their first round series. Other than that moment, Kuznetsov was a non-factor, especially when it came to the second round against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Facing off against Sidney Crosby, head coach Barry Trotz tried to spark Kuznetsov by playing him between Alexander Ovechkin and TJ Oshie on the top line for the final two games. However, the President Trophy winning Capitals lost to the Penguins in six games. Kuznetsov was reluctant to analyze his 2015-2016 postseason, but he did acknowledge his play, saying it was not at a high enough level in the postseason. He also said he had bigger expectations for himself and the Capitals, who finished the regular season with a league-best 120 points. I'm not ready to talk about my game right now, Kuznetsov said. I know it's not perfect and not even normal. It's kind of tough right now to talk about that. I know I have to play better in this playoff. Kuznetsov eventually turned around his playoff performance the following two seasons and in the 2017-2018 year when the Caps won the Stanley Cup, Kuznetsov tallied 32 points in 24 games played. Timu Solani Joining the Colorado Avalanche at the start of the 2003-2004 season, expectations were high for the Finnish Flash to perform on a team that had the likes of Joe Sackick, Peter Forsberg, and Solani's former Anaheim Mighty Ducks teammate Paul Correa. While Solani didn't have a great regular season to begin with, he really bombed when the Avalanche made the playoffs as he only mustered up three assists in 10 total postseason appearances. The Avalanche were eliminated in the second round after losing in the Western Conference semifinals 4-2 to the San Jose Sharks. Now, if you're thinking this seems very uncharacteristic of Solani, you are absolutely correct. This poor performance came after enduring many injuries, including a significant knee injury that he was dealing with for a while, and it got so bad that at one point it made him think his career was over. Fortunately, the following year was a lockout year, so Timu was able to get that surgery he needed and had the appropriate amount of time to recover, so by the time the lockout was over, Solani was back in game shape and returned to the elite NHL star we all know him to be with the Anaheim Ducks. Garth Snow. Great goaltending is always in the recipe for a Stanley Cup winning roster. Unfortunately for Garth Snow, this performance will haunt Philadelphia Flyer fans for the rest of time. During the 1997 playoffs, the Flyers were working with the tandem of Garth Snow and Ron Hextall. The Flyers were ultimately swept by the Detroit Red Wings in the Stanley Cup Finals. After losing Game 1 of the Finals, the Flyers elected to go with Snow for Game 2 in an attempt to even out the series. 
To say it simply, Snow was brutal. He gave up a goal on a shot by Brendan Shanahan from right inside the blue line to open up the game scoring. Then he gave up a juicy rebound for the Wings to take a 2-0 lead. Thankfully for the Flyers, Rod Brendamore tied the game, scoring two goals in the second period. However, minutes later, the Flyers will lose all momentum when Snow gave up a goal on a long slap shot from Kirk Malpy. Despite dominating most of this game, the Flyers were defeated 4-2. After that game, Snow was done. Although Snow and Hextall work together on this, Hextall gets a pass because he is a former Conn Smythe winner, and it's just so hard to hate Hextall, there's no other goalie like him. As for Snow, Flyers fans will always have a bad taste in their mouths because of this Game 2 meltdown that led them to a four-game sweep. Rick Nash now here's an odd case of a goal scorer trying to do everything he could do possible to snap a goal drought, but he just couldn't seem to find an answer. Playing with the New York Rangers, Rick Nash led the playoffs with 83 shots, but only scored three goals. Now you always hear coaches saying, put the puck on the net and good things will happen. But for Rick Nash, this was not the case. Was he just taking bad angle shots? I mean, keep in mind, Nash was still protecting himself after being concussed early in the season on a Brad Stewart headshot. Maybe he was just nervous and not acting like himself and squeezing his stick too tight. The man just couldn't score. Look at this open net shot he has, but Slava Voyanov had to spoil the moment with a mid-air stick block on Nash's one-timer from the right circle. This would have been an overtime winner in Game 5 against the LA Kings. However, the puck did not go in obviously as we saw it was blocked and the Rangers lost the game and the series just 5 minutes later. Danny Heatley Coming off a debut season where he scored 39 goals for the San Jose Sharks, it looked like all the trouble of getting this prolific winger out of Ottawa was paying off quite nicely for San Jose. But that magic only lasted a little while. Heatley registered 9 points in 18 postseason appearances in 2011. Sure, that's bad, but not horrible. What's truly horrible is when you look at this 2-time 50 goal scorer only putting up 3 goals in 18 games. Despite his poor performance, the Sharks made it to the Western Conference Finals, but ultimately fell short in Game 5 against the Vancouver Canucks. Now putting that 2011 season aside, in 32 playoff games with the Sharks, Heatley scored just 5 goals. Sure, he was nursing injuries in both those postseason runs, but that's just the nature of playing for the Stanley Cup. Everybody's hurt. The winners are the ones who can push through those injuries and produce anyway. To emphasize how poor his performance was, Heatley had zero goals in the Sharks series against Vancouver in the Western Conference Finals and put up zero goals in the series loss to the Chicago Blackhawks in the previous Western Conference Final. The 2013 Toronto Maple Leafs After 19 years, the Toronto Maple Leafs have finally won their first playoff series since 2004. Since that last win, Leafs Nation has had some heartbreak to put it nicely. For many fans, Game 7 of the first round of the 2013 playoffs is still fresh in their memories. With that historic Leaf loss, the Boston Bruins became the first NHL team to win Game 7 of a Stanley Cup playoff series after trailing by three goals in the third period when they rallied to defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs 5-4 in overtime at TD Garden and win their Eastern Conference quarterfinal series. Toronto led the game 4-1 after Nazem Kadri scored 5 minutes into the third period. The Bruins made it 4-2 when Nathan Horton scored at the 9 minute mark, but the Maple Leafs appeared to have the game in hand until the Boston Bruins pulled their goalie Tuka Rask with 2 minutes remaining. Not only did the Maple Leafs not hit the empty net, the Bruins notched two more goals with the extra man, one by Milan Lucic and another by Patrice Bergeron. The game would go to overtime where Bruins legend Bergeron then finished the Leafs off by beating Toronto goalie James Reimer at the 6 minute 5 second mark of overtime. Thanks for watching our videos, don't forget to leave a like and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button.